Good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the second video of today. The first one was actually recorded way back at around 12.30 midnight, just past midnight this morning, looking at the latest on Hurricane Barrel. More on that in just a second, but before we continue with the video, hit that like button, share your friends and family and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. We continue, as the title suggests, uh, to search for summer. And unfortunately, through the course of this weekend, it is going to be anything but summer-like. Charge, our longer spells of rain, will be the dominant player. In any sunshine, we will probably see temperatures rise into the low 20s in a few spots. So actually not feeling too bad. It uh, it, it could be worse. I know there's plenty of folk out there that are saying, <laughs> uh, you know, it couldn't be much better. But uh, uh, or it couldn't be much worse, whatever you, way you want to look at it. But certainly nonetheless... We are um, going to see a, a rather unsettled con pattern continuing through the course of the weekend. And then there's, there's some optimism as we push into next week that we may slowly start to see things settling down and warming up somewhat. But certainly the first day, five days or so of the month has been on the cool side. This follows a below average June overall and a disappointing summer overall as well. Uh, at best, three days of temperatures in the mid to high 20s. That has been really about it during the course of summer so far uh, and yesterday we certainly did have a very powerful jet in fact uh, i did hear a couple of pilot reports of um jet stream winds the, that they happened to fly within of 178 miles per hour uh, i believe it was flying east from humberside yesterday and um you know 178 mile per hour jet at this time of year is pretty darn impressive for for july but it's all thanks to a lot of heat uh, built up across Siberia and unusually cool conditions uh, over the north and uh, north of the UK that has been driving that strong jet stream. Very, very flat zonal jet stream at that. You can see here that the core of the jet is now starting to exit the UK and uh, we are going to start to see uh, a little bit of a change taking place as we play through this gfs loop here you can see that we uh, drop into the, the underneath the trough the jet actually drops to the south and southeast of the uk and uh, that is where you start to see the air uh, uh, rise uh, it's enhanced when you get this dip uh, and this little trough develop this little kink in the jet you tend to find that this is where the air tends to pile up and want to go up the way so that is why we're going to see a lot of showers or longer spells of rain through the course of the weekend. And then as, as we play right the way through uh, into the early portions of next week, we remain to the south of the jet. But what I expect to start to see happening is the trough to then start to kind of pull more towards the west of the UK. And it may allow some heat and humidity across, say, the central region of Europe to then start to lift towards the UK. So we'll monitor this as we go forward. But uh, I want to just uh, quickly touch on Beryl. Uh, it uh, actually re-intensified before it moved on shore during the overnight period in uh, near Tulum in, on Quintana Roo. That is the province within Mexico on the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. So it re-intensified from a Cat 2 to a Cat 3 hurricane uh, prior to landfall, the last major hurricane to make landfall in Quintana Roo was a uh, Hurricane Dean in two thousand and seven, uh, which is uh, which is quite interesting. And uh, it actually did make a landfall. It must have reweakened once again because uh, Phil Klotzbach of CSU says that it uh, made landfall in Quintana Roo. I think it was near Tulum as a Category Two hurricane, the third Cat Two plus hurricane on record to make a July landfall in Quintana Roo. Prior to Beryl, the last Category 2 or above was July uh, of 2005 when Emily moved on shore as a Category 4 hurricane. And this was the scene that we've seen from the Tulum area. This is say uh, from Up UK News. And uh, you can see the, uh, the, you know, the classic kind of land. damage has been quite as bad as what we've seen in in Beryl's path so far whether it be the you know uh, Karakou Island or Jamaica for example where we've seen quite a lot of uh, devastation in a sense 
some interesting imagery here. This still amazes me. This is some uh, satellite captures looking down into the eye of Beryl. And uh, like I've said before, it really is just incredible. The technology that we have at our disposal now, see these meso vortices kind of spinning around the, the, within the eye itself. And if you look at this image here in particular, you've got these close-up images that actually show the sea below. So this is a, a, an incredible image when you think about this. You're, you're looking from space and you can pick out in great detail this super sharp resolution of the actual wave activity on the ocean surface within the eye of, at that time, Category 4 Hurricane Beryl. So pretty incredible stuff. And uh, I will do a Tropical Outlook tomorrow in a bit more detail looking at the uh, final landfall of Beryl, uh, which is expected to take place later Sunday into early Monday, somewhere in the far north of uh, Mexico, if not south Texas. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail in tomorrow's Tropical Outlook. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens beyond that. So looking at the uh, looking at the uh, this is the pressure chart here of medial seal for the last uh, twelve hours or so, and you can see here the squeezing ice bars, high pressure over Iberia, low pressure of the north nine 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 eighty eight millibars, and you can see a real squeeze in the in the pressure field here over particularly the northern UK here. We've generally got about ten fifteen millibars across the south coast of England. Where we had the uh, kind of around 990 millibars on the north coast of Scotland here, and a particular tight squeeze over Scotland in the north of England that generated the uh, some fairly widespread gale activity actually during yesterday. It really did not feel like a July 4th day when you factored in the breeze, subdued temperatures 12 13 Celsius, feeling cooler in the wind. We had the uh, Issues with uh, high sided vehicles on, on bridges, for example. We did have furry disruption. We also had snow over the highest tops and mountains as well. So obviously we had the, what, seven, eight days in a row of snow on the mountains of Scotland during the month of June. And now we're starting to see, uh, you know, this cool pattern deliver even more snow over the tops of the mountains here. So this is kind of just accentuating what is already a disappointing and cool overall pattern. But if we play through this loop here, you can see the area of low pressure moving gradually to the east. And what we're going to start to see is an area of low pressure moving in to the south and southwest of the British Isles over the course of this evening. We've actually got uh, the evidence of that shown by the radar here, showing heavy persistent rain across parts of South Wales, and particularly so across southwestern England, moving right the way up into the southeast of the UK as well. Thankfully, Glastonbury isn't happening this weekend because it looks as if it's a, a very, very soggy-looking upcoming weekend to come here. So if we look at the, the GFS chart here, and this is the overview, let's have a look at the uh, the Northwest Europe view, but it's a little bit closer, it's a little bit easier to pick out. So you can see here that as we play through the course of the sea, you know, there's that day rain moving through the south of the British Isles here. Still got a, a, a weak area of low pressure just off the Outer Hebrides, if you notice here. We do have some fairly heavy persistent rain expected across, say, Murray and uh, the Inverness area during the overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Could see uh, a good uh, quarter to a half inch, even an inch of rain falling. Even double that, actually, if we get the winds coming in through the Murray Firth and into some of these um, these kind of areas where you've got the geography that the wind and the moisture naturally funnels through, and you can actually pick up uh, much bigger rainfall totals. If we actually look, the, the resolution in the GFS is never as good as the, the ECMWF, so actually we'll look at the, the ECM model instead here and show you the details. So that actual that feature that moves into the south of uh, the UK during the, the course of this evening and overnight, will bring a rather soggy Friday into Saturday morning. And it actually develops this low. So obviously I showed you the jet digging south. We've got this little dip in the jet representing a trough. And there, therefore it's actually allowing an area of low pressure to pop within that uh, trough here. So what is going to happen is this is really going to just kind of set the tone 
for a rather changeable, disappointing July weekend. You can see here that as we continue to play through, that area of low pressure actually drops into the low 990s and millibars. That's going to throw moisture in from the east, in from the North Sea. Spells of fairly heavy, persistent rain. Shower activity is going to be the case as well, because we've got relatively cold air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere as well. So lots of instability, cooler air aloft, relatively warmer at the surface. That then just kind of enhances the instability already present within the atmosphere. You can see here fairly heavy, persistent rain moving in to the uh, to the Murray Firth, the Cromarty Firth, the Dornock Firth as well. We could see some fairly heavy and persistent rain as that um, east to northeasterly flow kind of picks up pace. But this is a uh, 12 UTC tomorrow. Very, very messy picture across the UK and Ireland. Still messy across the heart of Europe, if you notice here. We've just simply not had much of a break from the disturbed weather. That has been the case for quite some time. Things settle down as we progress into tomorrow evening and uh, overnight. And then during the course of third, uh, Sunday, sorry, we reignite these showers with the daytime heat coming into play. We will see some very lively shower activity. Thunder, thunderstorms likely as well developing within that unstable air. We've got the strong incoming solar radiation as well. And with cooler aloft and low pressure, you then see widespread showers developing late morning and through the the afternoon hours so it looks as if we are going to see a very very messy overall weekend to come then as we move into the early portions of the new working week we've got another system moving in from the southwest but then there is some subtle changes taking place yes we've got more in the way of rain to speak about during monday into tuesday here of next week that band kind of lifts its way north seen by the ecmwf shower activity on the back side of that but you notice the changes now starting to show up. Areas of low pressure coming in from a southwesterly direction, then lifting that energy northwards. Obviously, you've got some warmer over central Europe with that low position here to the west southwest of the British Isles. We're then going to draw some of this warm, humid air into the pattern. And at the very, very least, yes, it's still unsettled, but at the very least, we're warm things up from the 12s and 13s in the north yesterday, upper teens yesterday. Uh, across the south we're at least going to see something a little bit more july feeling like even though it's not necessarily going to feel that way because of the rain uh, and whatnot less in the way of wind as well during the course of the weekend so some of these showers will be slow moving they will likely drop quite a lot of rain in a fairly short space of time if there's no wind to blow these showers through a given area so we need to keep that in mind as well we could see some fairly significant rainfall totals so let's go back out to the bigger picture and i'll show you here the 850 temperature profile of the model um, and you can see here that uh, we've got the cooler in place at the moment continue to draw that polar maritime air in from the northwest there's that heat across iberia bringing big contrast between the uk and spain and portugal here we've seen low 40s yesterday afternoon probably the same again today and notice here that as that area of low pressure peels away to the east here during the early hours of Sunday, we're actually going to try and reinforce some of that chilly air coming in from a northerly direction here. And then it's as we move into the early portions of next week, this is the change. The position of the low dipping south here to the well to the west, southwest of the UK and Ireland, as these areas of low pressure, once you start to shift the trough west, then you're seeing the the orientation change in the in the both the surface and the upper levels of the atmosphere. These areas of low pressure then start to swing down into the base of the trough, and then get pulled north north eastwards into the UK. Like I said, still unsettled, but look at the warmer now starting to get closer and closer to the UK here, thanks to the realignment of the upper air pattern here. And then as we continue to play through, it looks as if we're going to see much the same. Looking at the, uh, finally, this is the ECMWF weeklies for the upcoming seven-day period. You can see here that we've got a trough digging into the central United States. Deep trough over the UK and Ireland with a ridge in between. If we skip out to the day 7 through 14, you can actually see uh, a change, quite a, a big change. We've lost that deep trough over the UK and Ireland here. We're starting to see that ridge now starting to kind of bridge between North America and Europe here. We do have a weakness, you know, was here to the southwest of the uh, UK and Ireland, hence the areas of low pressure kind of to the southwest position. 
and then that, that kind of opens the door to something a little bit warmer coming in from the southwest here so our southeast should I say and then as we continue to play through even beyond that you notice here that heights are coming up in a more uniform way does it necessarily mean that we're just all of a sudden going to break out into summer like weather that remains to be seen if we look at the, the europe view for the same time frame and let's have a look at the uh, the temperature anomalies here for that uh, period and you can see that we have got again nothing overly warm to write home about despite the fact that we're raising the heights here we're likely to start to see something drier taking place as well but if we go back to the the current upcoming seven days it's firmly below average skip out to the 7 to 14 day and generally what you you would say here is you're get you're losing some of that deep chill but it still remains average and slightly below average so this is the period out of the 18th of july then as we continue to play through here the ecmwf model is subtly starting to show something a little bit warmer trying to come into the south but this is all the way out to tuesday the 20th tuesday the 30th of july so again all in all given how cool it's been so far it's going to take a while to try and get close to average so um just have to keep watching this as we go forward that's it for today tropical outlook tomorrow live stream will be back as per usual at 4 p.m on on sunday so stay tuned for that and i would greatly appreciate it if you can hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content here in the channel but you haven't already done so please do it would be much appreciated and i'll see you tomorrow with the tropical outlook live stream sunday enjoy the rest of your weekend bye for now